Hey, everybody. Welcome back. It's Beyond the Saga, where we explore all those stories beyond the Skywalker Saga. Dave Cottingham here with Hannah Burr. Good evening, Hannah. Good evening. How are you? Doing fantastic. Uh, we are just on the heels of talking about a Claudia Gray book, Into the Dark, and we are now continuing, and not necessarily meant to do this, but we are talking about another Claudia Gray book, and that would be Master and Apprentice, which came out back in 2019, April of 2019, actually, uh, and a fantastic cover with Qui-Gon Jinn and Obi-Wan Kenobi. So right away, I mean, I was drawn in right away just by that, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so again, a little outside of the norm here, this book takes place outside of the Skywalker saga. So this takes place about eight years prior to episode one, which would be roughly around 40 BBY is what they mean. Um, Obi-Wan Kenobi is still a Padawan, only 17 years old, um, which is kind of crazy because that means he's about 25 during episode one, right? Which he seems yeah. a lot younger, th uh, younger in there in that movie, but but anyway, uh, Master and Apprentice, Claudia Gray, um, highly, just you know, highly, um, what I want to say, it's a, a reviewed book. A lot of people love this book. Very well done, obviously. So digging deep, in, uh, digging right into it. Overall impressions. It's just a fantastic read. I mean, we get to see something we don't see very often, which is a master and their Padawan. Not that they don't get along, but they're not gelling. Mm -hmm. They're not flowing in the force together. It's not like they're a cohesive team. And we see yeah. that between Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan, which I think is very refreshing because we don't see it a lot. Creates some internal conflict, sets the story going. Uh, Qui-Gon gets offered a position to join the Jedi Council, which he wisely decides to chew on. And that also leaves Obi-Wan trying to fight feelings of failure. That mm -hmm. maybe he was the one who pushed his master away. And then they are off uh, to the planet, planet Pygel, where they are helping Rael uh, Abaros, I believe, who is still a member of the Jedi, but... He has his own demons and he doesn't necessarily follow the Jedi code to a T. Right. Uh, right. And so we learn more about this roguish Jedi, I think is what I would call, who's the regent, I believe mm -hmm. is the right turn, mm -hmm. term. He's the regent uh, set to take care of a very young princess who's yes. going to be made queen and they're trying to prevent her assassination they're worried because there are some rebellious behaviors going on and so Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan have to look into that and then we get introduced to the whole we really dig deep into the slavery that's happening on this planet and through a company that mm. has an alliance with the embassy there so and then in, in the meantime we get a parallel story of Qui-Gon being Dooku's Padawan. Yes. So that's a fun story there as well. And we learn more about how Qui-Gon really got into prophecies. And not yep. that it became an obsession, but it makes you wonder if that was something that tempted Dooku to the dark side, in addition to the Jedi not following what he believed they should do. Yes. So it's one heck of an adventure. There, there are humorous moments. There are serious moments. It's just a great, fun read. As soon as you get into, or a great, fun listen. As soon as you get into it, you can't put it down. You can't hit pause. So that's my takeaway. Yeah. That's a brief synopsis of what the book's about. Uh, yeah, without giving your, too much away. Yeah, without giving too much away, because there's a lot more that the book's about, but then you're really in spoiler territory. Uh, but yeah. what were your takeaways from the book? Well, I think, you know, the reason why we mainly held off doing this also was because of Tales of the Jedi, which was coming out, which is the new 
animated series that Dave Filoni put out there uh, because one of those story arcs in that series is about Count Dooku. And it looked like from the trailer, you know, you saw a young Qui-Gon. So you kind of got the impression that maybe we're going to get some story between those two characters a little more, which could lend itself to what happens in Master and Apprentice, like you said, because Dooku obviously was his master, but he was also Rael Avros's master. Yes. As we learn, right? So, um, so, th- so there's a lot, you know, there wasn't a lot of Dooku in this, but there was enough to, uh, like you said, illustrate a lot of where Qui-Gon got his beliefs. And, you know, it does, it does to me add some weight to a little bit of the things that happens in Tales of the Jedi, especially when, um, you know, I don't think this is a spoiler because it's out there already, but like, you know, especially when one of those episodes is right, uh, runs right along the side of episode one when Qui-Gon gets killed. So you get Dooku's reaction to that. And then you kind of fast forward to episode two when, you know, he's got Obi-Wan captured and he's telling Obi-Wan, like, I wish Qui-Gon were here to help me, you know, cause there is that good rule. There is a, there was a good relationship between master and apprentice then. And you see that dynamic kind of carry over to master and apprentice of Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan. But Obi-Wan, like you said, has, you know, there's some different, there's some butting of the heads there a little bit that, you know, uh, just, it just conflicts, I guess, a little bit of what, He's trying to teach him what Obi Wan's willing to learn, but in the end, you know there is a conflict here that they have to work together on to to solve. And um, like the book illustrates, I mean, them back to back and fighting with each other is just something that's just awesome to see in this. Mm-hmm. So I would, you know, I would say, like you said, it's uh, it it's it's. It's not like the previous novel we were talking about. It gets you from the beginning and it takes you on this ride and it's, uh, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. So what, I mean, anything, um, I don't know what, what anything else stood out? I think something that I don't know if this was intentional, intentional or not, but I think another parallel between, uh, Qui-Gon and Dooku story and Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon story is that when we get to Qui-Gon and Dooku, they've already worked out their differences because Mm. Qui-Gon has learned what Dooku is like when he was originally, when they were originally assigned each other, Qui-Gon was a little confused and didn't quite understand him. At least that's the subtext. And now he gets him and he even went to Rael for advice at times because he's mm-hmm. like, I, I Dooku responded this way. I don't know what to do. And so Rael was a little bit of a mentor during those times. So I think, I think that's to help us see that masters learn from their Padawans and Padawans learn from their masters. It's both ways. Yeah. And yeah. we see that in this book as well between Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon. Mm-hmm. So I mm-hmm. think that's another important thing to highlight um, before we get to some questions that we have between Tales of the Jedi and this book. Right, right. Yeah, and I think you know what what drew me in, what drew me in a lot in this book was something that obviously is brought up mainly in Episode One, which is the prophecy. Hmm. And, you know, with this book, I thought it was interesting to not only find out, you know, why he was so into the prophecies to kind of explain how he knew the chosen one prophecy, because, because, you know, when you look back at episode one, when he brings up, I mean, he doesn't flat out say the prophecy, but the way he described Anakin the Jedi, the Jedi Council was like, you're talking about the prophecy, and it's almost like to them, it's like, 
wait a minute, that thing, no one believes that, you know? <laughs> and we're learning through this and through other th- other stories that not only was there a chosen one prophecy, but there was a ton of other prophecies, right? And that's what was really interesting to me to, to learn. I wonder, because I remember listening to some of them and the, so when it comes to like fortune tellers and things like that, anything could be interpreted, right? Interpreted a certain yeah. way. There are several ways to interpret different things. But yes. when we were listening to some of those prophecies, I was like, that could potentially mm-hmm. have been fulfilled if you think this is this and this is this. So right, that was definitely fascinating. It's very fascinating. Yeah. And- and then, yeah, and then, you know, again, having that dynamic between Obi-Wan, you know, questioning why why is Qui-Gon so into these prophecies? Why is he not more into more, you know, practical solutions or concerns? And obviously that's what I think is making him conflict with the, the council so so much, right? So mm-hmm. um so that that was that was really interesting to learn. A lot more about Dooku, or um, a lot more about Qui-Gon. And and um, and his thought process going into, you know, episode one and where we found him then, because because, again, you know, Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan even brought it up kind of in episode one. Like why, you know, if you would only follow the council, you'd be on you'd be on on it, you know. So. But, you know, he had other things he wanted to deal with and. And and I I just I feel like you get a little bit more of a background on that kind of stuff in this book. So, um, let's see what else. Uh, what I mean, what so what do you think about? What do you think about any kind of? Did you feel any connection with Dooku or Qui Gon with this and Tales? Uh, wait, a connection between. But just like any, it, just that story and this story, was there anything that kind of uh, put in the question? I mean, just the one thing. <laughs> <laughs> just the one thing. And, you know, maybe it, it goes back to the conversation we had on Inside the Forest regarding that Ahsoka episode that were, that was completely different from the book. Well, not completely yeah. different, but different enough to make you go, huh? Yeah, it, w- it was different. I mean, it was it was a retelling almost. Yeah. Of the same situation, but yes. Um. So, the one the one question I have is, and and this isn't really much of a spoiler, but yeah. we see Dooku try to recruit Rael to, to the dark side. To the dark side. Yes. And. But Rael doesn't really leave the Jedi Council. Or sorry, he's not a part of the Jedi Council. Rael doesn't really leave the Jedi Circle. So it just it brings up so many questions. It's like, did Rael not tell anyone? I thought Dooku was off because in the book we hear that Dooku kind of fell off the map, fell off the radar. And so it's like, wait, so now they let Dooku back into the Jedi Temple? Yeah. And they just let him go into the library and they let him do this. Like it just, it's so confusing. And then he talks to Qui-Gon as if they've been in touch over all of these years. Mm-hmm. So it just kind of. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little yeah. off. Yeah. It doesn't feel right. Yeah. Yeah. If you, if you just go by, it, it's crazy. Cause if you just go by tales of the Jedi and watch that series, you know, it, that does kind of line up with episode one when we get to episode one. But the problem is, is that what just watching Tales, you wouldn't assume that he had left the order yet. Right. Which he had done years before episode one. If you go, if, if everybody's listening, we haven't done it yet, but if you go listen to it is it's it's in it's in script form now in, in book but it came out as an audio drama which is Dooku Jedi Lost the book was called Dooku Jedi Lost and I had listened to that when it came out 
it's a fascinating, fascinating listen. Uh, really good. I think you'll really enjoy it, Hannah, because it's all about Dooku and it's all about his journey with his family and things like that. So we'll we'll save that. But but to me, that that was also a little bit of eh, it didn't really conflict with tales, but it did it did explain why he still has a lightsaber. Right. When supposedly he left. So it does connect that. But then, like you said, with this, it does, it does conflict a little bit about where, where he is, where the Jedi feel like he is. And, you know, again, in episode two, he's described as one of the lost 20, right? You know, a, a person that walked away from the order. So someone that walks away from the order, why would they be coming back? You know, so it's a, that's where it does get, oh, bless you. That's where it does get a little, um, it does get a little hazy there in a sense. But, you know, I, I was afraid that some stuff like this would happen once you start opening and trying to connect everything. Yeah. But to be honest, like part of me feels like it's starting to just get kind of lazy. Um, or loose, like almost like they don't really mind it anymore that it just conflicts. But, but I felt like that was the beauty of it in the beginning was that everything does have a purpose and this situation is what happened. And now knowing that it can be retconned in a way or retold and I I don't know, I, I get it. There's different points of view. The situation is what matters. So but that, I, that's a pretty big different like that. Like I can understand that with the Ahsoka episode. Mm-hmm. I can get it with that. I don't think I can get that with this. Because yeah. it's it, it's not like it's a different point of view. It's it's very black and white. He either. He either left. Or he, or didn't. he didn't. Yeah. Right. And once again, this book takes place eight years mm-hmm. before Phantom Menace. So you mean to tell me within those eight years, Dooku came back to the Jedi, regained their trust, regained, regained his status to the point that he could go into the library with no problem and, and delete the a whole planet. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I mean, that's, I know. It, it was, it, to me, it was almost... It may, and this was, and actually, this was probably George's plan with ep- when episode two. But it, it felt like in episode two that Dooku was explaining about leaving because of what happened to Qui Gon and right. the corruption he was seeing. So it, it makes tales makes more sense, and it's not Claudia's fault at all. Because, right. you know, this book came out before Tales of the Jedi. And so in my mind, Tales of the Jedi makes more sense when you consider that and consider episode two. Yes. But I love this book so much. And I love the fact that Dooku did try to recruit. And it also brings up to the fact of in episode two, when Dooku's like, I wish Qui-Gon was here, he'd be able to help. Yeah, yeah. So it, it's so... But I feel like these two, like it's two separate things. It, it's not, it's not a different point of view at this point. It's yeah. Like, I hate to say that, but it just, it, it bothers me. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're right. I think things like that, that are centered around big decisions like that, like leaving the order or not leaving the order. Like you can't get, you can't, you can't, uh, you can't paint that as a, well, this person thought he left and this person didn't think he left. You know what I mean? Right. There's a fact there that he left or not. And explain what happened to master Gattle. Wait, <laughs> what was that? <laughs> My husband just chimed in everybody. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he said they had to explain what happened to master Yaddle. Well, they, yes, they did have to explain that at some, uh, at some point, which again, that, that it, that part is canon, obviously now, and um, the the discovery of Sidious by Yaddle, which is pretty amazing. But um, but you know, 
but Dooku, you know, his fall, which is part of tales, right? You know, isn't necessarily described in this book and necessarily described in Dooku Fallen Order, um, because again, they kind of they kind of held that back. I feel like you know, when did that actually happen? When did Sidious actually start talking to him? When did he actually get started get manipulated? I, um, I think I might disagree with you a little bit there. I think it's heavily implicated in the book because they kept on saying like prophecies is a way to the dark side because you start obsessing over the future and you start being scared of what either the future holds or what you could lose to the future or something along those lines. And there is a moment in this book when Qui-Gon, you know, like digs into some prophecies and then Dooku scolds him for it. But then all of a sudden Dooku kind of pulls himself away. And there's a scene where he's just staring at this holocron. Uh So I, and Rael explains like Dooku was really obsessed with prophecies. So I think it's hinted at least in the book that a huge reason why Dooku went to the dark side was because of his obsession with prophecies. Oh, at least that's what I got. But then I watched Tales and I'm like, so maybe it's his obsession with prophecies and the fact that he thinks from. Yeah, I was about to say, because I think I think I got I got I mean, at least I got the fact that he. Yeah, he he's definitely obsessed with prophecies, and I feel like the. Uh, the the pro, the the um, the mentality of the order and the Jedi at the time didn't 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 line up to his what he was starting to believe through prophecy, which is ultimately what Qui-Gon became in a sense. Right. Right. Um, I, I didn't really get the sense that that caused him to turn. Oh, okay. Um, I think it just kind of, it could have it kind of started his path of not agreeing with what the Jedi was doing. Mm. You know what I mean? Okay. Um, but 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 again, that's what I'm saying is like there's no clear cut, uh, there's no clear cut timeline when when did Palpatine start injecting his manipulation? Okay, okay, I get that. You know what I, I mean? I, I would agree with that. Yeah. And in Dooku Jedi Lost, we don't really get there either uh, because a lot of that's happening. A lot of that book takes place even before this, so. So somewhere in between 40 BBY and 32 BBY, according to Tales, at some point, Dooku gets involved with Sidious. Mm-hmm. You know, um, yeah. Maybe it was a slow kind of planting of the seed like Sidious or uh, like uh, Snoke did with uh, Ben. You know, yeah, if- yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think so. I think it had to take place over a certain amount of time, and Dooku had to start seeing the corruption. You know, right? Um, but that's what. I'm, but that I still keep. I still keep. I guess. It, I guess ultimately it was. I mean, we saw it. We saw the thing with Yaddle, and of course the guilt of of Qui Gon's death. Mm-hmm. Um ultimately pushed him over but anyway yeah i mean that's kind of the turn right that was kind of when that ultimately happened but but he he was already doing sidious's bidding by then um but like you said but you know not really talking about tales necessarily but like you said it, it does it does cause a little bit of discontinuity in a sense yeah. so so anyway, um, but I will say, like I, th- I think I told you earlier today, there is a book coming out called Star Wars Timelines. Which Answers! Is be, I know, Answers! which is, which is going to be interesting. I'm really curious on exactly what stories they are going to, are they, are they truly putting every story in there? Or are they only putting in the canon stories? You know what I'm saying? Like, like will they, what, what I'm kind of confused on is will they, for example, the Ahsoka book, will mm. they, will they put, will they put the book in there 
or they just put that situation. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hey, yeah so yeah. I don't know. We'll have to see. Uh, February, I think it comes out February, early February. So that's one I will not wait to buy. I will buy that right away because I am. It's, it truly, it's like one of the most anticipated books I've I've been waiting for. I've been waiting for this timeline thing. I mean, they just, they just, they just haven't put it out yet. So, all right. Uh, overall, uh, well, let's see. Impact. I want. I do want to talk about because this is char- familiar characters. Um, impact of these characters with you know the movies. Does it change your perception of episode one at all and going into the prequels? I think it. I think it helps solidify why Qui Gon was so different from the other Jedi, and I think you know it really puts a lot of emphasis behind that. It puts an emphasis about uh, behind why Obi Wan, you know, feels a little intimidated of taking Anakin under his wing, mm-hmm. because you know he, like, let's be honest, duel of the fates. The whole reason behind that is, yeah, it's the fate of Anakin. Yes. If yes. Qui-Gon survives, Anakin doesn't turn to the dark side. If he dies because Qui-Gon was the father that Anakin needed, then that's it. Dark side won. Mm-hmm. So I think this, it also, it also gives us a little more context about the prophecies, which is nice. Yes. Uh, so I think, I think it's a huge impact. I think this is a must read book. Mm-hmm. And also it, you know, I mean, Tails did a great job of this already, but it also, gives us a little inside view into who Dooku is. Yeah. Uh, I will say this though. It is starting to take away the coolness of kids running their own planets (laughs) because this little girl is like, so-and-so is ruling this planet and they're, and they're about my age. And I'm like, well, Padme doesn't sound that cool anymore. No, does she? Right. Yes. So that, that's just a side note. That's but true. in general, please read the book. It's really good. Yeah, no, to, for me, this does, uh, this adds, to me, it adds, adds so much to the dynamic between Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon going into episode one. You know, yes. it's it's always it's always helpful to get backstory. Um, so, you know, knowing, knowing this history and knowing more history of Dooku, um, especially is is uh is impactful for how how these movies are viewed uh you know you you know i remember as you as you have seen i'm sure with you know uh, with the clone wars you know when we get that that mortis arc and you know there's obi-wan there and you get that qui-gon return and you know, you just you start diving so much more into their dynamic and their relationship, and you know the way the force works and all this, all this stuff. And then, like I said, the the whole prophecy thing has always been interesting to me. So, seeing more of that, hearing more of that, understanding the real, the reasons for those things and whether or not they're real or they're fake, they're made up. I mean, even a lot of those come into question sometimes. So. uh so Qui Gon is yeah Qui Gon is a really different Jedi than than the rest of them and maybe yeah. that's the reason for a lot of their downfall, uh, which is why I think he believes. Um, so yeah, I think it's very uh, it's a very good novel to get into before you uh, it gives you a little bit more to think about when you go into the movies. So overall rating on this one, four point five. Yes, interesting. Um, Not as high as others, but this is to me. um, Was there another one? I'm starting to to try to remember (laughs) all the other books that we've done. Um, Dark Disciple. Yeah, to me, to me, this and Shadow of the Siths. Thank you very much, because to me. Dark Disciple, Shadow of the Sith, and this one, they're like right up there. So I, this is a five for me. Like this is. Oh, dang. Yeah. Because my top three are pretty much the five star ones. And I would put this Dark Disciple and Shadow in my top five. 
I don't blame you. I don't so. blame you at all. I think those are my three high, highest rated books as well. I think it's like this is a 4.5 and then Shadow and Dark Disciple are like 4.75. Yeah. <laughs> so you're not there at the five yet. Yeah. Okay, there, good. Uh, all right. Yeah. I'm a little generous, a little more generous <laughs> when it comes to ratings, I guess. <laughs> um, all right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Hannah. This is fantastic. Thank you. Uh, it absolutely is fantastic. Thank you to all of our patrons, of course. Uh, more to come. We've got, uh, what are you into right now? You're into the Thrawn Ascendancy books, I think. Yes, I've got six hours left of a 24 hour <laughs> third book. Dang. That's a ride and a half. Yeah, I've got to get into that so I can, uh, so, so, so you don't forget all those books by the time I'm done. Oh, but then we got to get into Afro. We got to get into High Republic. We got to get into Star Wars. We got to get into Vader. We got to get into the Dooku thing. We got to get into High Republic. We got to like, there's so much. <laughs> there is a lot still. I am finishing Princess and the Scoundrel. Yes. So you did that one already. Yes. So we'll talk about that soon. I'll finish that up here soon. Uh, what was the one I did before that? That Did we talk about I that? Don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, the one I did before that was um, no, it was it was Shadow of the Sith and then Brotherhood. Okay. So we did those. Yep. So anyway, yeah, we've got uh, yeah, we got a lot. We got a lot to get into. So we got a lot. I feel like as soon as next. we get one done, there's 15 more we got to do. I know because we're covering it all. Yes, we're, we're covering it all. All. Oh. You guys want to know about something? All you got to do is watch Beyond the Saga at Inside the Force. Uh, again, we're not trying to spoil stuff, so we want you to we want you to kind of enjoy it, but we want to give you kind of an overview of, of these things. So that's what we're doing, and keep coming back here. Or um, you know, now I will say, and I, I think I failed to say it on the last one, but uh, you got to come to YouTube if you want to get all of these episodes. We're not going to put all of these on the podcast feed now, so this is going to be more of an exclusive YouTube stuff, YouTube show. So. Go to the YouTube channel at Inside the Force and uh, and subscribe there and get these videos. In fact, the YouTube, I don't know if you know this, Hannah, but YouTube just came out with what they call handles now. They have handles now, like like social media. That makes so much more sense. Right. Because I started seeing some of that stuff. I'm like, are those handles? They are. So we are obviously at Inside the Force on YouTube. So you can go right there uh, and subscribe and mention us there and all that stuff. So smash do that. that like button, smash it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks everybody. Take care. Be back next time. Of course, hit up me and Hannah on inside the forest for right now. We're running through all the episodes of Andor on Disney plus. So check us out that later. Um, well, this is an evergreen episode, but we're recording this during episode nine of inside the Force. So, or, um, and or so anyway, we're going to review that next. Take care, everybody. Thank you, Hannah. Thank You're you. We will see everybody next time. May the force be with you. <laughs>